previously on X-Men. As I said this week, we're talking about the land and cheese, so get, get ready for disappointment. According to WB, well-known incel, the Lan Chi could be described as such. The Lan Chi is a spirit who seeks the love of men. Her lovers waste away, for she lives on their life. For she gives inspiration to her slaves, and is indeed the Gaelic Mule. It turns out that William fucking Butler Yeats just took, he just took an English concept, a, a fairy from English folklore, and brought it over to Ireland, and had his friend, he didn't even do it himself, he had his friend translate the term fairy lover into Irish, and then claimed it was ancient Irish folklore. You cheated me, old man. Cheated me of vengeance. Cheated me of justice. Had Yeats died instead of marrying in 1917, he would have been remembered as a remarkable minor poet who achieved a diction more powerful than that of his contemporaries, but who, except in a handful of poems, did not have much to say with it. In 1917, W. Yeats married Bertha Georgie Hyde Lees. Or Lees Hyde, which was it? Yeah, that's true. In 1917, W.B. Yeats married Bertha Georgie Hyde Lees, who then just added Yeats to the end of that after marrying. Gotta catch them all! Georgie was the third woman Yeats had proposed to that year. He proposed first to Maud Gone, a woman he had been hounding for roughly 30 years, then to Maud's daughter, Isselt Gone, who also rejected him, and then finally to Georgie. Georgie was 25 when they married, Yates was 52. Despite marrying Georgie, Yates was still obsessed with Maud and with Isolt, and would spend a lot of time moping and yearning after them writing letters to Isolt. Georgie noticed this, and four days into their honeymoon, she proposed that they engage in automatic writing. Now, automatic writing is a spiritualist idea, it's where you take a pen in your hand with some paper, close your eyes, and you allow the spirits to move you to write whatever they want. Now, Yates was surprised that Georgie wanted to participate in this, but Yates was an avid occultist, so he was delighted at the idea. After that first automatic writing session, they would regularly partake in sessions of automatic writing throughout their marriage. And what came out of these writings was very interesting. Within the first week, the spirits suggested how Yeats could improve his marriage with Georgie, how he could improve his performance in the bedroom, and encouraged him to forget about Maud and Isolt, which he did end up doing at their encouragement, of course. But more than this, Yeats took inspiration from these spirits for his writing, his poetry, and a grand book called A Vision, which was all about Yeats' occult beliefs. Yeats would often refer to Georgie as his muse, as his inspiration, as the fount from which his writings would spill. This, of course, fits with parts of W.B. Yeats's description of the Lanarnshi. The Lanarnshi seeks the love of mortals. If they refuse, she must be their slave. If they consent, they are hers, and can only escape by finding another to take their place. The fairy lives on their life, and they waste away. Death 
is no escape from her. She is the Gaelic muse, for she gives inspiration to those she persecutes. The Gaelic poets die young, for she is restless, and will not let them remain long on earth, this malignant phantom. I have to give a hot tip to the Cryptid Keeper podcast for this one. They recently did an episode on Banshees, in which they made allusions to the Lananshee and talked about Georgie and the automatic writing, which was something I was not previously aware of. And when I first heard that, and put it together with what I had learned in previous episodes of this YouTube series about the Lananshee and how Yeats had invented it, I had thought that perhaps his creation of the Lananshi was merely Yeats writing fan fiction about his wife. However, it turns out that he had published his works on Irish folklore, including the Lananshi, before marrying Georgie. So instead, I think something else has happened. I think it is altogether possible that Bertha Georgie Hyde Lees had read what Yeats had written about the Lananshi and decided that this was the most effective way to get him to adjust his behaviour in their marriage and to engage with him in a way that he would actually listen to. I think that Georgie intentionally became Yeats's Lananshi. It was after his marriage to Georgie that Yeats developed his nationalism, developed his love for the Irish culture and identity, and his drive to see Ireland independent. And it was after his marriage to Georgie that he wrote most of his most influential poems. Georgie, for her part, helped in the writing of Yeats's poems, both through the automatic writing and more directly. And after Yeats's death, she kept tight control over the publishing and editing of Yeats's works, almost, almost right up to her death in the 60s. At which point, she bequeathed the collection of Yeats's work to the Irish people as a gift. I find it very likely that the later works of W.B. Yeats were not in fact the later works of W.B. Yeats, but were instead the complete works of Georgie Hyde Lees Yeats in collaboration with W.B. Yeats. <laughs>